Welcome to lesson four of module one. In the last lesson, we looked at the different types of dementia and their symptoms. In this lesson, we're going to examine the changes that happen inside the brain of someone living with dementia. We'll first look at a healthy brain and then consider the effects that Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, Lewy body dementia and frontal temporal dementia can have on the brain. The brain is the most powerful organ in your body. It's nourished by one of your body's richest networks of blood vessels. So when you're thinking hard, your brain can use up to 50% of your body's fuel and oxygen. Its wrinkled surface is a specialised outer layer of the cerebrum called the cortex. Scientists have mapped the cortex by identifying areas strongly linked to certain functions and behaviours. Divided into two halves, the left side of your brain controls the right side of your body and the right side of your brain controls the left side of your body. An adult brain contains about 100 billion cells called neurons. Together they make up a forest of cells with branches connecting neurons together at more than 100 trillion different points inside your brain. Neurons constantly chatter with each other, communicating with each other through electrical charges that travel down their bodies, triggering, triggering the release of chemicals across tiny gaps called synapses to neighbouring neurons. Other cells in the brain called glial cells clear away debris and help keep neurons healthy. In someone living with Alzheimer's disease, the most common form of dementia, toxic changes in the brain destroy this healthy balance. These changes may occur years, even decades before the first signs of dementia. Alzheimer's disease kills neurons throughout the brain, disrupting both the way electrical signaling within neurons and chemical communication at synapses actually happens. Then over time, the brain shrinks dramatically, affecting nearly all of its functions. And the prime suspects for this horrendous genocide going on inside the head of someone living with Alzheimer's disease are two proteins called beta amyloid and tau, which become toxic to the brain. So beta amyloid builds up into abnormal clusters between neurons, and these are called plaques, blocking their ability to communicate with each other and triggering an immune response that actually kills the neurons themselves. So the abnormal tau protein accumulates inside neurons, forming what we call tangles, blocking the supply of essential nutrients within a neuron, eventually killing them. Plaques and tangles tend to spread throughout the cortex in a predictable pattern as Alzheimer's disease progresses. So this, the rate of progression actually varies greatly from person to person. On average, a person with Alzheimer's lives four to eight years after diagnosis, but they can actually live as long as 20 years, depending on other factors. The course of the disease depends in part on age and diagnosis and whether a person has other health conditions. So vascular dementia, which is the second most common type of dementia, is caused by impaired blood supply to the brain, causing neurons to malfunction and, and sadly to die eventually. So vascular dementia may develop after a stroke or a series of mini strokes. And a stroke can be caused by a blocked blood vessel, and this is called an ischemic stroke, or a burst blood vessel, and this is called a hemorrhagic stroke. An ischemic stroke happens when a blood clot blocks an artery, interrupting the blood supply to the brain. Blood clots may form in the artery by some foreign material, or more often cholesterol, or when the heart isn't pumping blood properly to the brain in conditions called atrial fibrillation. Hemorrhagic stroke happens when an artery supplying the brain leaks or ruptures. This can be caused by high blood pressure, overuse of blood thinning anticoagulants or abnormal formation of blood vessels such as aneurysms. This causes damage to the brain in areas that are actually distant further away from where the burst blood vessel happened and can affect any part of the brain. So dementia symptoms might appear suddenly after a single large stroke or they might develop in a stepwise fashion after a series of sometimes unnoticeable mini-strokes. And this stepwise change in dementia, dementia symptoms seen in multi-infarct vascular dementia can actually be used to distinguish it from the more common form of Alzheimer's disease and subcortical small vessel vascular dementia, 
which both tend to progress more gradually. Lewy bodies, named after the German neurologist who discovered them, are tiny clumps of protein called alpha synuclein that develop inside neurons. They prevent the neurons from communicating with with each other by disrupting the chemical messages between them, eventually causing the neurons to die. We actually don't know how or why Lewy bodies form. It's not clear if they are the actual cause, an innocent bystander, or perhaps even a protective factor that is present when this brain disease appears. Lewy body dementia can affect any part of the brain, leading to many different symptoms, and these include difficulty with movement and deterioration in physical abilities. Frontal temporal refers to the lobes of the brain that are damaged in this type of dementia. The frontal lobes of the brain, found behind the forehead, deal with behaviour, problem solving, planning and the control of emotions. An area of usually in the frontal lobe also controls speech. The temporal lobes on either side of the brain have several roles. The left temporal lobe usually deals with the meaning of words and the names of objects. The right temporal lobe is usually involved in recognising faces and familiar objects. So frontal temporal dementia occurs when neurons in the frontal and all the temporal lobes of the brain die and the pathways that connect the lobes change. Some of the chemical messengers that transmit signals between brain cells are also lost. And over time, as more and more neurons die, the brain tissue in the frontal and the temporal lobe shrinks. And when the frontal and or the temporal lobes are damaged in this way, this causes the symptoms, including changes to personality and behaviour and difficulties with language. So there you have it. We've examined how the four most common types of dementia change both the structure and the function of the brain. In the next module, we're going to examine the different risk factors for developing dementia, and we're going to start to consider what you can actually do to reduce your risk for developing this progressive brain disease. So I'll look forward to seeing you there.